This video is brought to you by Surfshark. Stick around to hear more about the special offer they're providing to the entire upper echelon community. All right, today, as the title suggests, I wanna talk about the bizarre world of being a billionaire because recently, despite vocal efforts to the contrary, we actually got a very interesting glimpse into the mind of Elon Musk through a two hour deposition that occurred in a lawsuit between him, the billionaire, and a certain aggrieved Twitter user. The details of that lawsuit are significantly less relevant to the video topic than the deposition testimony itself, but here's a basic rundown. Elon Musk decided to substantially amplify a social media post, which allegedly falsely identified a 22-year-old young man named Ben Brody as an undercover FBI agent, effectively causing the claim to go viral and subsequently impacting his life. I'm not really here to weigh in on that particular case. There's this giant conspiracy theory surrounding it now, and it's a hornet's nest I don't want to be involved in. But in my view, it's become a sort of window into the mind of a billionaire, despite that never actually being the goal and despite a considerable amount of effort being expended to prevent that from happening. The testimony was about two hours long, and there's an audio file of it floating around somewhere online, but for right now, I'll stick to the written transcript. This conversation is hilarious, but as I read through and started developing a better understanding of the case itself, the thing that really stood out to me was a spider web of connected dots that made me sit back in awe of just how unique the day-to-day -day life of a billionaire must truly be, for reasons that most of us simply cannot comprehend. This is where the story gets tricky. To properly explain everything, I have to play a context game and discuss what seem to be isolated situations that actually mesh together perfectly inside this deposition when attempting to understand the mind of a billionaire, beginning with a seemingly innocuous screenshot. In April of 2023, shortly after acquiring Twitter to begin with, Elon Musk posted a screenshot during a discussion about subscription revenue on the platform. That screenshot inadvertently showcased that the device he was using Twitter from actually had two accounts logged in, the second one being this, Ermin Musk. Now, what's interesting is that this account is called Elon Test, but appears to be Elon himself, who had been actively using it on the platform for quite some time, saying, honestly, just really weird shit. He would say things such as, do you like Japanese girls, replying to billionaire Michael Saylor, founder of MicroStrategy, which is interesting because these two billionaires do not appear to be friends in any sense of the word. He would say things like, what nightclub were you at? I wish I was old enough to go to nightclubs. They sound fun, in response to yet another billionaire, Brian Chesky, CEO of Airbnb. And at times, he appeared to be impersonating his own toddler son. He would reply to posts about Caroline Ellison, the CEO of Alameda Research, who turned against her former lover Sam Bankman-Fried during the FTX trial, which was one of the largest fraud cases of all time, saying things like, I heart librarians. And he would even post replies to his own tweets with really bizarre comments. I have absolutely no idea why this account existed in the first place or why he was engaged in quite literally middle school level trolling on social media. But at the time, no one knew if it was him. That is, until now. All right, endorsement time. Today that endorsement is Surfshark, which is the longest running and consistent sponsor for this entire channel, making, at this point, I think hundreds of videos possible with their support. Surfshark is a VPN, a virtual private network, and VPNs protect from a bunch of different things. Keep in mind, by the way, nothing in cybersecurity is ever 100% perfect, and no one should claim that it is, but Surfshark protects against certain types of phishing attacks, malware, DNS tunneling, DDoS attacks in particular, and also against a portion of the now horrifically normalized practice of big tech data harvesting as well as tracking. Switching gears, Surfshark unlocks additional content on streaming websites, such as Netflix, for example. Just change your region, which unlocks additional options in your video content library as a result of licensing agreements. Surfshark also helps mitigate regional censorship, like the government deciding to block websites. And Surfshark also offers encryption, IP protection, modification, and more. I say this every time in every single segment about them. Surfshark operates completely separate infrastructure from NordVPN, and Surfshark also maintains a warrant canary. If you click the link down below using promo code Echelon at checkout, you can take advantage of a special community-wide offer with up to three months for free. Again, that's promo code Echelon with the link down below for a community-wide special offer, three months for free. Big thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring the channel. April of 2024. This is the point where we get a two-hour deposition in the Ben Brody case, which Musk's lawyers tried fairly desperately, I would say, as an adjective to have suppressed, directly addressing this burner account with a very odd exchange. Quote from opposing counsel. Can we bring up tab E? All right. Is this another account that you use to see tweets on Twitter? Answered by Musk. I don't use that account. I think I briefly had it as a test account. Bankman continues. Well, that's what I'm asking. In the summer of 2023, right? Which is when I'm seeing this post on here. Was this an account that you would use where you would see tweets on Twitter? Answered by Musk. No, 
I would not use this account. It was just for for testing, opposing counsel. I mean, look, there's a tweet I see. There's more tweets on this account, right? Were you like, you were posting and viewing tweets with this account? This is where Elon's lawyer, Mr. Spiro, jumps in. Objection. Asked and answered. I don't see the relevance to the fourth question. Move on. End quote. After a couple more words in between, Spiro continues, he's not answering. He just answered you twice. He's not answering any more questions about this account. After which Elon obviously ignores that statement and finally answers, I briefly used this account as a test account. There are only two accounts that I use on a regular basis. One is my main account and the other is babysmoke9000, end quote. First off, I can't help but laugh here at the absurdity of all this. Elon Musk seemingly disregarding his own lawyers, answering questions about a burner account where he posts weird troll comments to other billionaires. We sit here, us normal people, with this vastly overinflated perception of what the elites are doing when the reality is they're involved in completely absurd situations like this while millions, even billions of dollars are somehow at stake because of it all. Don't believe me? Okay, fine. I'm just going to read here without listing off who's speaking every time. If you want, you can read the deposition yourself or pause the video right now and see who's saying what listed on screen, but just and here it is kind of unfiltered. Lawyers do not, it is not in accordance with the lawyer's creed to just start making random statements about the alleged frivolity of a case to another lawyer in deposition. You know that's not proper. You know that. Do you give these lectures at all of your depositions? I do, and you can watch them. In any event, this is not, this is not a tweet that's alleged. If you're alleging that this tweet is directly related to the brawl, ask. That's what I'm asking him, Mr. Spiro. Oh, okay. Is there some code in Texas that you don't yell and raise your voice in depositions? Why are you yelling? Calm yourself. Yeah, why are you yelling? Calm yourself. Calm yourself. I'm very, very disturbed by what you're doing. You're yelling at everyone. I'm very disturbed that you're instructing the witness. I mean, show some decorum. I'm not instructing the witness. I'm not instructing the question. Ask your question. Okay, now that I've got you up to speed, can I ask my question? Yeah, I asked you for the relevance of how this relates to the court order. You gave me an answer. I'm not preventing him from answering, so ask your question. All right, let's keep moving. Mr. Musk, this meme, the question that I had was, this meme jokes that there are almost daily psyops, correct? This is a joke about psyops. Okay, but psyops for you are not always a laughing matter, right? I mean, don't, I don't think there are actually daily psyops. This is, no, I get that. I understand. A tinfoil hat. Right, I get this is a joke. I understand that. It's a joke, obviously. What I'm asking, though, if somebody puts, may I finish? Sure. Do you feel the need to yell again? I might. Yeah, I've rarely met a lawyer with less decorum than you, if you could be called a lawyer. So this is a joke, obviously. Right. This is just a kitten with a tinfoil hat. Uh-huh. And in fact, it is making fun of the fact that there are people claim psyops when there often is not a psyop. Okay, but... What I want to ask you about is for you, this is a joke, but there are other times in which for you, psyops are not a joke. I think the vast majority of time people think there is a psyop and there is not a psyop. The end. Honestly, I probably didn't do it justice, but just, this is a billion dollar lawsuit where two of the most renowned and expensive lawyers in the entire country are arguing over a meme of a kitten in a tinfoil hat that a bored billionaire posted on a social media platform that he bought for himself as kind of a present of sorts. At a certain point, reality becomes far more absurd than anything we could creatively imagine. I'll have to do some general summary here in order to get through everything, but this deposition makes a few things abundantly clear. One, Elon Musk probably misspoke when he talked about his other burner account because Baby Smoke 9000 doesn't exist. Baby Smurf 9000, however, does, and that account has been doing things like replying to billionaire Mark Cuban calling him an idiot during the same period of time when Elon Musk and Mark Cuban were arguing with each other. Two, Elon Musk blatantly acknowledges that he has financially harmed Twitter. Quote, going back to the sort of self-inflicted wounds, the Kevlar shoes, I think there's, I've probably done, I may have done more to financially impair the company than to help it, but certainly I do not guide my posts by what is financially beneficial, but what I believe is interesting or important or entertaining to the public, end quote. And lastly, three, Elon Musk lacks pretty much any day-to-day -day knowledge about how his actions manipulate wider platform behavior. He didn't fully grasp who this lawsuit even pertained to, self-acknowledged a complete lack of context about the case itself, and to be totally honest, he probably faces so many lawsuits and legal discussions in his normal day-to-day -day activities, I can't really blame him for that. He talked about how a common occurrence is lawyers running up bills for their clients by pursuing him in particular. 
frivolously, I think was the word. And I wouldn't doubt that for a single second. Looking at the full scope of the deposition, in my opinion, it becomes clear that Elon Musk does not have any sort of comprehensive verification process for his Twitter activity whatsoever. He merely browses the site like everyone else. However, this is where the dots all connect, because while he may browse the site like everyone else on an individual level, the website and its broader community does not react to him the same way it does compared to an average user. Bear with me. See. Elon Musk has now cultivated a sort of inner circle on Twitter where a small group of rapidly growing accounts are shown far and wide, consistently pushed by the website's algorithm and frequently attracting comments and interaction from the man himself. On the surface, no big deal. That's probably a natural phenomenon. But digging deeper, we start to understand how big of an issue it actually is. Here's what I mean by that. One of the people he most frequently interacts with, there are quite a few that fall into this category, is called Wall Street Silver. This account has over a million followers. It is constantly farming engagement on the platform by posting content from other accounts and impulsively pushing provocative material, but it's managed by a man named James Morrison. This is where things get crazy. The owner of that account is currently, allegedly, pushing aggressive legal action against the moderator of a Reddit community for daring to talk about who he really is. I say allegedly here, but this is the Orange County Clerk Records, where you can read all the details about the case for yourself if you want to. What's more, there is a wealth of information about a man named James Morrison who was charged by law enforcement for interstate vandalism and extortion. Here are some quotes from Seattle PI about the case that was brought against him. Keep in mind, this is not me saying this. I am not the person making such allegations. I am simply reading publicly available news stories and drawing from publicly available lawsuits. Quote, King County prosecutors claim Issaquah resident James Henry Morrison launched a terror campaign against his ex-co-workers at Avalara. Further down, for an eight-month period, Morrison created an environment of fear no one knew where or when he'd attack." End quote. Another portion reads, Morrison worked only briefly for Avalara, though his short tenure didn't stop him from demanding a large severance payout. Seattle Police Department Detective Christopher Young said in a statement to the court, when he was denied this money, he launched a terror campaign against the company which involved covertly vandalizing the homes and cars of random employees in order to compel the company to pay him to stop." End quote. And lastly, quote again, According to charging papers, Morrison traveled to North Carolina and vandalized homes of Avalara workers there. Morrison was arrested June 29 at an Issaquah bank. He was alleged to have been setting up an account in expectation of a large payment. End quote. This appears to be the type of person that Elon Musk is directly promoting and interacting with frequently. There are many more examples from his inner circle of most frequently amplified Twitter accounts, but since this individual appears to be now engaged in targeted legal action to suppress his critics, it's an important example to give. Why? Well, let me explain. See, there is a never-ending parade of people attempting to enter Elon Musk's orbit. There is a consistent and omnipresent bombardment of people who want his time and attention, while he would probably much rather be devoting his energy to literal space travel or family or whatever makes him happy. That kind of attention might sound theoretically appealing to some, but reality is completely different because we often fail to consider one crucial fact. See, normal, well-balanced, stable, and successful individuals are not consistently pursuing social media validation and close proximity to a billionaire purely for the financial incentive it might offer them. Normal, thoughtful, everyday people with solid emotional stability and decent morals are not attempting to farm as much engagement as they possibly can on Twitter, regardless of plagiarism, authenticity, or impact, which means that Elon Musk, during whatever time he chooses to spend on Twitter to begin with, is faced with a very distinct situation. All around him, there is a constant horde of the worst, greediest, most incessantly self-centered people you can possibly imagine clamoring for his time, his attention, and trying desperately to get him to notice them by posting whatever they think will be most appealing to him. That's not an easy concept to understand, by the way, because you or me or pretty much anyone really has no comprehension of what that would actually be like, having the social fabric of the entire platform change just so that you will talk to them constantly. And because of this, he is faced with a rat's nest maze-like experience every time he logs in. For a while, I thought it would be practically impossible for him to be unaware of just how infested the platform had become, but now I realize, thanks to this deposition in particular, that a far more likely situation is that he genuinely just doesn't allocate very much mental energy to this topic because Twitter isn't that important to him. And why would it be? It's a bunch of screaming people on the internet when he's much more concerned with launching actual rockets into space. 
However, with that lack of prioritization, things get complicated because the most aggressive, widely visible, and vocal demographic are those with a financial incentive who will do anything for profit, filling Musk's periphery with deceptive posts and plagiarized material as often as they possibly can, regardless of what is true, valuable, or even fundamentally moral. Their sole motivator is to post something that could be viewed, passingly by this particular owner, as interesting, important, or entertaining. And the subsequent fallout of that is a platform where the deciding factor behind should I post this or not has nothing to do with truth or value and is only calculated by whether or not it can earn the author a little bit of money and maybe get Elon Musk to notice them for a second. Consider that for a second. Like, really consider it. The bizarre world of a billionaire is one in which the entire social fabric of whatever space they are in gets twisted and warped by their very presence in a negative way. Is it their fault? Maybe. I personally don't really think so. But regardless of whether or not they can be held liable for it financially, in the courts, for example, it still happens. And it's a state of existence that we regular people just cannot comprehend. Thanks to a two-hour deposition that a legal team tried to suppress but failed, we now know that Elon Musk personally believes he has done more to harm Twitter than to help it. He browses the platform with various burner accounts to troll his fellow billionaires. He is surrounded by an army of deceptive and greedy influencers who will do or say anything to make money, and it's entirely possible that he has no idea about most of this. That part I'm not sure about. Some of the characters in his inner circle are just fucking terrible people with extremely obvious behavior. But the bizarre world of a billionaire is one where the normal fabric of society literally changes because of them, even if their actual behavior isn't all that different from the rest of us. There's a lot of people out there who go on social media and post things without thinking, right? That's kind of the norm. Or without fact-checking. Again, super normal. Just so that they can be entertaining. This is very common. There's a lot of people who make themselves fake burner accounts and reply to their enemies with troll posts, or reply to themselves for whatever reason. But those people aren't dictating the outcome for billions of dollars, tens of thousands of jobs, or literal pieces of governmental regulation. No, no. Those outcomes are the result of billionaires behaving pretty much the same way as everyone else, just living in their own bizarre, ultra-high-stakes world. That's it. If this video is a hit, maybe I'll try and do one about Zuckerberg. If you want to support the channel, check out the links down below. This is the final day to get Upper Echelon Spring Collection merchandise, right? It's going away for good. It's available right now, link down below. Um, yeah, it'll be gone in like 24 hours, I think. So get them if you want them while you can. Also the video sponsor, Surfshark, of course, and more, Patreon and locals, monthly subscriptions, et cetera, et cetera. But I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching and have a nice night.